The Canon 24-7 f4.0 lens is the newest addition to Canon's lineup of lenses and I'm pretty excited to give it a go today. We're going to go out here in San Francisco and we're going to try it in the real world and see how it holds up. On paper it's a really exciting lens. It's, it's lightweight especially for a lens in this class. It should have really good optical performance. If you look at the numbers the corner to corner sharpness is much better than the 24-105 and almost as good as its big brother the 24-7. 70 2.8 Mark II lens, which for a lens of this weight and size class is pretty impressive. I'm expecting to have good color saturation. It should have the modern focusing system that gives you quick and accurate focus as well. The nine bladed circular diaphragm should mean that you get nice bulk and creamy background blur. And the image stabilization I'm pretty excited about as well. It has a new hybrid image stabilization system with four stops of stabilization. Which means that when you're taking a video or when you're hand holding at lower shutter speeds, that should really help out as well. I really like how versatile this type of lens is. 24 millimeters is wide enough to be able to get a good landscape shot. For instance, we have the Bay Bridge back here. So when I zoom out to 24 millimeters, I really get a nice and wide shot, so let me just line this up correctly and that is looking pretty good. So I think for a lot of people when they're looking at this lens, they'll compare it to the 24-105 f4 lens, which has long been a favorite and it's the kit lens as well that came with the 5D Mark II, with the Mark III at the moment and with the 6D as well. So that's a really popular lens that a lot of people have used. Do I like this lens better? Actually, I do. Some of the things that were problematic with the 24-105 is that the corner-to-corner -corner sharpness just wasn't there. The flare control wasn't as good as I would have liked it. Uh, but most of all, the optical quality, the color saturation, the sharpness of it was somewhat lacking with the 105. This improves on all of those, plus it gives you better image stabilization. And I find that the focusing system is faster as well. So all, when you add all those things up, I do like this lens a lot better. So I've mentioned the image stabilization before and this is why it's such a big deal. This part of the clip was recorded without image stabilization and here you can see it with image stabilization. It makes a huge difference when you're hand holding a camera, when you're not on a tripod. It's almost impossible to make a movie while you're moving without image stabilization. So that's a really big deal with this lens. It's really well suited for video. One of the pleasant surprises I had today was how much I liked the macro mode feature on this lens. So what you do is that you zoom all the way out, you hit this little switch and you can zoom beyond the 70 millimeter mark and that puts it in a macro mode. Macro mode allows you to take close up images of st stuff really close by to it and fill the frame with tiny little details. And Normally it's a choice you have to make. Do I bring a macro lens or my extension tubes? And am I going to do macro photography today? Which means most of the time you actually just don't bother. At least that's been my personal experience. When you have a macro mode feature built into the lens, however, whenever you see something interesting, you just flip it into macro mode and you take the picture. So that's relatively new, at least that is for me. And I'm really excited about that. I really enjoyed being able to do that. So I had a lot of fun playing with this lens today and I have to say I am impressed by it. The optical performance is good, the color, the saturation, the focusing speed, the bokeh quality, just all of those things check out. The macro ability is actually more fun than I expected and I was impressed by how it held up when I was doing things like panning and zooming and low shutter speeds, a lot of movement in the camera and it was holding up really well and the image stabilization really performed better than I hoped for. Uh, it performed really well when I was doing a horrible thing like walking while hand holding a camera. Something that you shouldn't do if you want to make a professional quality movie but it really tortured the system and I have to admit it, it did straighten out a whole bunch of the effect of moving around and hand holding a camera while making a video. So I like this lens, I'll definitely be using it, I'll probably be using it mostly for taking videos in that regard, that's going to be a lot of fun to have the dim stabilization there. And I enjoy testing it. I'm looking forward to hearing what you think of the review. Uh, if you like it, please reshare it or like it on YouTube. And you can I'll find out more time. about this fantastic offer by clicking the link in the description.